around the news as a way to expose problems. But today, we're talking solutions. Our reporters at Grady News Source went into the community to see what's being done about issues that impact Northeast Georgians. Today, we'll explore one nonprofit's effort to give baby essentials to new parents in need how a University of Georgia organization repurposes food that would go to waste into meal platters aimed at hunger relief, and an affordable option for those who can't drive but need a ride. Welcome to Grady News Source at 5. I'm Anna Hughes. Tonight, on our final show of the semester, Grady News Source reporters focus on solutions to problems that Northeast Georgians are facing. First up, we'll look at solutions to poverty in many forms. One solution takes on a necessity for families nationwide, diapers. Many struggle to afford the essential item. Grady News Source reporter Adrian Godoy shows us a local nonprofit that's working to address the issues in cities across Northeast Georgia. Diaper need is a problem that affects one in three families in America. It's a problem the Athens Area Diaper Bank is working to fix. The Athens Area Diaper Bank is a local nonprofit that provides infant supplies to over 20 organizations in Northeast Georgia. Athens Area Food Bank, Oconee Area Resource Counselor, and Project Safe are some of the organizations that distribute directly to families. Beth Satin, operations manager for the Diaper Bank, says it makes getting these resources easy for families. So rather than um, working with their WIC office and then having to fill out another form to get diapers, another form, we just, it's a seamless part of that process. A yearly supply of diapers can cost up to $1,000, and government programs like WIC and food stamps do not help cover these expenses. In Northeast Georgia, that results in more than 8,000 children experiencing diaper need. Lack of access to these childcare supplies can have severe physical, emotional, and financial impacts on infants and their families. It can lead to urinary tract infections. Families are just making uh, financial choices, like do I put gas in the car or do I buy, di buy diapers? Dr. Kara Simmons, who once experienced diaper need herself, says the organization's work is critical in addressing the issue in Georgia. I mean, I think it can make an uh, extreme difference just from a personal experience. You know, it, it can make a significant dent to someone's um, budget if they're not or if they don't have the income. In the five years since its inception, the diaper bank has supplied over 500,000 diapers, with 315,000 of those going out in 2021. The only drawbacks the organization faces is not having enough labor power and storage capacity to supply the demand. Maybe we have this many size two diapers, but we need this many, but maybe we have this many size five diapers, but we need this many. Those yeah. who have benefited say the organization has helped tremendously. In a feedback survey with Bulldog Basics, a distributing organization, many beneficiaries reported how helpful the system was. In the coming years, the diaper bank hopes to continue the trend of increased supply. For 2022, their goal is to provide 400,000 diapers to families across Northeast Georgia. Adrian Godoy, Grady News Source. With athens Clark County being one of the poorest counties in Georgia, lots of families and their kids are at risk and cannot access many things that they need. Grady News Source reporter Taylor Green introduces us to one organization that works alongside community members to fix this problem. Terrace Thomas oversees a leadership program at Family Connection of Athens, which works with at-risk families and children within the Athens area. Family Connections is um, a collaborative, it's a nonprofit that focuses on um, holistic health, safety, uh, support of children and their family. Although Family Connections works with families all over Georgia, Athens has a dire need for at-risk families, which is why they have adopted the Neighborhood Leaders Program. The Neighborhood Leaders Program assigns 16 different leaders to different neighborhoods in Athens to connect with the families and provide what they need on a day-to-day -day basis. The fact that we're the only um, community right now that's, uh, that has a program such as the Neighborhood Leader Program, it just further highlights the fact that we are indeed intentional. Markia Rucker is a neighborhood leader in the Eastham Zone. You name it, we do it. So we partner with a lot of different organizations to um, complete food drives. Um, we'll actually deliver food to our residents to their doorstep. Um, as well as, like I said, resource fairs, where we'll bring in jobs, 
um, financial assistance, utility assistance. The neighborhood leaders warehouse is where they keep all of their products that they provide for families and children. And we have all of our goods here. So like behind you right now, we have the roll that's for diapers, pull-ups, and wipes. When we need to get them to a resident, we come here and we pick out what we need, we sign it out, and we get them to the appropriate people that need them. They have different aisles for the elderly, medicine, literature, and clothes. Currently, Athens has a poverty rate of 26.4%, which means that over a fourth of the population lacks the means to satisfy their basic needs. If the family cannot provide for themselves, then kids will undoubtedly struggle at the home and in their academic life. Daryl Bailey, director of Empowered Youth Program and UGA professor, expresses the importance of educating youth. Kids need our help in so many different ways. Family Connections is a, is a wraparound program, meaning that every day the kids can get all the help they need and families can. Family Connections is hoping to expand their program and to help more kids in the near future. Grady News Source reporter Taylor Green. Next up, Grady News Source reporters look at how different groups are strengthening their communities. For a few days a month, the athens Clark County Jail turns their educational classroom into a barber shop where inmates can receive professional, quality haircuts. The barbershop program serves as an apprenticeship opportunity for residents to get experience and learn a new skill. Some can even use the knowledge, once released, to open their own barbershop or pursue a license. However, the program still has potential to expand. You know, be able to give haircuts to their children. You know, because think about it, although you're incarcerated, you still want to be able to provide something for your children. While tr getting trimmed up, the residents gain a lot. They can check out a book to read, converse with other inmates, or even complete a rehab application. But Miss Gray says the best is seeing the confidence that comes with a fresh haircut. Since 2008, the Athens Area Community Foundation has collaborated with generous donors and other local organizations that respond to the needs of the community. Grady News Source reporter Brendan Kerner gives us an in-depth look at how they make that happen. Community foundations work hard from a community leadership perspective to really understand the landscape of community, where the intellectual, social, financial needs of a community. And then they work with philanthropists and make for a great grant making institution. Sarah McKinney leads the Athens Area Community Foundation, which acts as an intermediary between philanthropic donors and nonprofit organizations so that funds for areas of the community that need improvement get them. One of the most timely issues in Athens is the need for affordable housing. Vice President of Operations for Athens Area Habitat for Humanity, Charles Smith, deals with this issue on a daily basis. If we could build a thousand houses, and we could build a thousand houses with more money and more people, then we would make a significant impact into this community, which again ranks 158th out of 159 in the state of Georgia for home ownership. Athens Area Habitat for Humanity gets volunteers to help construct different types of affordable housing for middle to low income families. Approximately 21,000 households in Athens do not have the incomes to cover average monthly homeowner costs and the work Habitat for Humanity does helps with that. One volunteer has witnessed the program's impact firsthand. Towards the end of our, our day of working, um, one of the family members who lives in the house that we were fixing up uh, drove by to pick up mail and like she she went in the house and saw what we did for the day and you know, she had a smile on her face. However, without sufficient funding, Habitat for Humanity would be unable to break ground on important projects. That's where the AACF steps in. We have issued multiple grants to their organization over the past many years. For example, we knew they were going to go into a partnership on a quadruplex with another local nonprofit. They needed to raise about twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars to make that whole and make it happen. Financial security has allowed local organizations to provide more on giving back and the AACF provides that through advising and managing assets. With over $2 million given out in grants this fiscal year, the AACF continues to contribute back to the nonprofits that exponentially benefit the community. Brendan Kerner, Grady News Source. The Georgia Conflict Center is hosting a community event Thursday at Terrapin Beer Company from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. There will be live performances, food, and an opportunity to learn more about the work that the Juvenile Offender Advocates and Georgia Conflict Center do within the Athens community. Executive Director of the Georgia Conflict Center, Daniel Malik, says it is a great way to share their work with the community. Look forward to kind of being back in person for this event and look forward to more kind of 
thing doing things together in person because that's really you know restorative practices is, is so rooted in relationships and connecting so we look forward to that the georgia conflict center works with schools and institutions to help build peace and to encourage restore restorative practices portions of the proceeds will go towards the organizations and their programs after the break, we look how different nonprofits in the area have created programs battling the high rates of food insecurity in Northeast Georgia. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Uh, 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 there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies, nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. How prepared is your family if a tornado shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a hurricane? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov slash plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. Regardless of where you are on your path to retirement, you can still take charge of your financial future today. Visit aceyourretirement.org and answer a few questions from Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. For free tips, resources, and advice customized for your situation to help you feel confident and prepared for retirement. Retirement looks different for everyone. Make sure you're prepared for your financial future at aceyourretirement.org. Now, Grady News Source reporters look at the fight against food insecurity. What started as a way to help the homeless community led to a bigger mission to bring light, hope, and help hunger across athens Clark County. Grady News Source reporter Hallie Turner tells us about one food bank program in Athens that is working to provide meals for families who do not have enough access to food in order to survive. Food insecurity is a growing problem in America. Nearly one in eight Americans lack enough access to food on a regular basis that hinders them from living a healthy life. One food bank here in Athens is working to solve this problem by providing their community with food each week. Jeff Rushing and his wife Connie lead City of Refuge Athens, a nonprofit they created four years ago. The food bank is now serving the highest number of families than they ever have before who cannot afford to purchase food. Really in the last nine months, we've seen a significant increase uh, in food insecurity and the lack of the lack of groceries. In January, the food bank supplied over 5,000 people with groceries, and in March, their numbers of those in need had increased by 2,000. One of the many people they are helping is Alicia Sanford, who lost her job in January. She says that if it were not for the food bank, she would not have been able to provide for her children. Um, to be honest with you, we wouldn't have snacks going to school. Uh, we'd have to rely on uh, people to do that. Um, and um, it just would put a huge damper on a lot of things. Um, I don't even know because it's just, I would have to look elsewhere. Each week, City of Refuge Athens serves their community through mobile drives, school drop-offs, and community delivery. The food that is given out is enough to provide that family with food to last an entire week. In April of 2020, the rushing started out just packing 25 grocery boxes and taking them into the community. Now, two years later, they have approximately 60 volunteers that come in weekly to pack over 250 boxes of food. Dr. Jerry Shannon, who studies the issue of food insecurity at UGA, says that although these programs are in place to help, it will never solve the issue of food earlier, insecurity. I think if you think about this primarily as an issue of you're trying to take a small blanket and stretch it to cover everything, you need a bigger blanket. Rushing added that it is through their partnership with Publix and Convoy of Hope that they can continue to provide thousands of pounds of food to their community. Hallie Turner, Brady News Source. 
As food insecurity continues to be a growing issue for the Athens community, Grady News Source reporter Ansley Edwards is in the studio with information on a few local organizations helping to find a solution. Around 29.93 of residents live below the poverty level. Here are a few local organizations that are providing a solution to food insecurity in the area. Athens Area Emergency Food Bank provides referred families with a week's supply box of food. Open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., they serve people who have been faced with emergencies upon referral by an approved agency. And located in Tate Student Center, the UGA Student Food Pantry is open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They provide non-perishable food items at no cost to any UGA student, as well as hygiene supplies. And lastly, Timothy Baptist Church hosts a drive through food pantry on Tuesdays from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. to provide non-perishable and perishable items to those in need. There are no ID or financial requirements to receive food. And these are just a few of the many groups fighting insecurity in the area. With so much grocery produce ending up in landfills and so many people in need of food, a nonprofit at the University of Georgia is trying to make a change. Grady News Source reporter Al Jacobson tells us how they found one solution to two problems. At the UGA Garden, student workers work with Trader Joe's to collect viable produce that they were getting rid of every Sunday, along with produce being grown firsthand at the garden. Imperfect produce is one of the highest contributors to food waste. We're very scared of consuming something that has a little nick or a rip. We just throw it away. You know, more often than usual, this is a perfectly safe. Student volunteers sort the food pickups each Sunday, where they compost what has gone bad, keep the usable imperfect produce, weigh what's left, and take inventory for that week's meals. We're sending it to people who, a lot of our families are not homeless, but um, are taking care of grandkids, they're older, they can't really access food like they, they need to. After sorting, shift leaders come in to plan what meals they can make for the week based off of what they have. And then the Monday cooking, we did bell peppers, tomatoes, um, they have some onions and some different herbs that we had, some basil and thyme fresh. Um, we gave them those, so they'll be making a kind of beef, uh, there's some ground beef with it, so they're making ground beef, vegetable stew kind of thing with lentils, um, so it adds some extra protein to me since we didn't have that much beef this week. After this, meals are bundled by ingredient, weighed, and put into refrigeration. Then, there are weekly cooking shifts, followed by volunteers on delivery routes. A lot of the client delivery is also getting to interact with those people, getting to talk to them, getting to have them have some social interaction and happiness that you can share with them. Mary Kokenauer drives some of these delivery routes, even becoming a household name to one family whose name is hidden for privacy reasons, where even the grandkids recognize her when they're in town to visit. Campus Kitchen has recovered over 330,000 pounds of food, delivering over 700 meals per month. However, there is still much to be done about food waste that everyday consumers can contribute to. To, to be more responsible when we're buying products, you know, not to buy because it's cheap, but to buy because we need it. Until more people avoid wasting food, organizations like Campus Kitchen will continue recovering leftover food, helping those in need. Ella Jacobson for Grady News Source. After the break, we learn about an organization who gives rides with their heart and the importance of representation of the Latinx community. People do some pretty cool things in their 40s and 50s. Why should saving for retirement be any different? I mean, they go back to college, learn new instruments, start skateboarding. Okay, maybe that one's not for everybody, but saving for retirement is. With aceyourretirement.org, you can get on track with your retirement savings no matter your age. Just have a three-minute chat with Avo, the friendly digital retirement coach from AARP. You'll get personalized recommendations based on your input that are easy to understand and work with your lifestyle. It's quick, easy, and free. Plus, it's sponsored by AARP, so you know they got your back. Woohoo! Gnarly move, Dad. Thanks, sweetie. So wherever you are in your retirement savings journey, head to aceyourretirement.org and start chatting with Avo today. That's aceyourretirement.org.
Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. College is already a challenge within itself, but attending a predominantly white institution can be tough for Latinx students. Grady News Source reporter Melissa Garcia tells us how this can affect the community and the importance of representation. The Hispanic community makes up about 6% of the student population at the University of Georgia. Dr. Laura Schettenhelm, who specializes in Latin American studies, says representation of the Latin community here is problematic but the issues are coming to light now. Before it was pretty easy to ignore something you didn't want to see. And now it's like acknowledging differences is important, but also being accepting of, of differences. This is where student organizations like the Hispanic Student Association and National Association of Hispanic Journalists step in to help with mentorship programs and activities. The program gives students like Sam Perez an opportunity to make meaningful connections and take a step into the right direction for her chosen profession. Going into a career that you know nothing about is really scary. It's really intimidating. And so to have someone be able to tell you, hey, this is what you can expect. This is what could really help you is just super useful. And it's it was an awesome experience. The mentorship NAHJ offers is part of the Atlanta chapter in which a student applies by sending some personal information and their resume, then they are nominated. After that, they are matched with a mentor from networks such as CNN, Univision, Telemundo, and more. Although establishing oneself at UGA as a Latinx student can be difficult, the understanding of having the privilege to go to such a prestigious school is not lost on this generation. I think part of our work as well is kind of like be like a bridge between like higher academia and like regular people who may not be associated with UGA, knowing that uh, uh, Latino people are, are represented and, and are valued in this space gives a great example to everyone else in Athens. The hope for faculty and staff is that students of color feel more comfortable in a space that may not always understand their needs or struggles. Grady News Source, Melissa Garcia. Most don't give a second thought about driving to the grocery store. It's a different story for those who can't drive themselves. Grady News Source reporter Madison Cook shows us how Wheels of Hope provides rise to those who can't drive. We'll sell you two wheels. Uh, of course, it takes about 12 bucks to get there. And then the class was like 12 bucks. And then it takes about 12 bucks to get back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that was okay for a while. Bowles Dean found it challenging to make it to and from meetings for the Athens Council for the Blind. Founders Jamaica Miller and Joe James were moved by such challenges, and thus Wheels of Hope was born. The organization provides car rides to those who can't drive due to illness, age, or disability. In Georgia, 800,000 people can't drive due to visual impairments. 12% experience a disability that prevents them from driving, and 30% of doctor's visits are canceled due to lack of transportation. It's more than just a car ride, though. These rides involve compassion and companionship for the rider. And that, that's the main thing that, that we're looking for, somebody has a good heart. To ride, riders simply submit an application, set up an account, and call to set up rides 48 hours in advance. In order to keep transportation at low cost, rides are $4 for pickup, $4 for return, and $1 for every mile. But no matter the length or time, rides will never go over $20. 
the volunteer picks up the rider from their home and drives them to their destination. Whether it's the grocery store or the doctor's office, the driver provides the passenger company at the destination and then drives them home. What they're also doing is providing like a wellness check. Yes. You know, yes. You know yeah. improving the quality of that person's life and also looking at them and, you know, making sure that, you know, they're looking fine. The one challenge they face is a lack of volunteers. They currently keep around 15 volunteers, but they need more. The current success wouldn't be if it weren't for Jamaica and her passion to drive. Yeah, Jamaica, she has um, a great ability to uh, bring people together that might not know each other otherwise. Mm -hmm. And um, I really have seen that with her just, you know, from this organization. But... Jamaica, who once had the dream to be a bus driver, now lives her dream through Wheels of Hope. Madison Cook, Grady News Source. Coming up, we take a look at how several organizations in Northeast Georgia are helping keep the environment clean. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. Jessica has been through a lot in her life from early childhood. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She came in looking to complete her diploma. Uh, she had a family she had to take care of. Anytime she needed help, we provided her help. She realized that we were here for her. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. My graduation, it was something I will never forget. I couldn't explain the emotion I was feeling because people like you and me sometimes may have doubts in yourself, but I feel that everything's possible. Jessica's future is brighter than ever. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. Trash in public spaces is an issue Oconee County is facing due to the lack of recycling centers in recent years. Grady News Source reporter Oz Marin tells you the efforts the county and its residents are doing to protect the environment. Charlotte Connell, a longtime Oconee County resident who has recycled throughout her life, always struggled to find recycling centers nearby. I lived in Walton County and we didn't have any recycling except for at the fire department and um, we would just load up all our cans and bottles and stuff and, and take them to the fire department. Now Connell has the option to go to a local recycling center because of the initiatives Keep a Coney County Beautiful Commission started. KOCBC is increasing citizen awareness of their environment and providing opportunities to the public for a cleaner community. KOCBC opened up recycling and waste centers throughout the county to aid people in having easier access to reusable centers. People can bring in recyclable items such as metal, mortar, oil, tires, and more. We have five waste and recycling centers. We're pay as you throw. Um, you can buy bags and put your waste in there, but all of our recycling is free to our residents. Since the opening of these centers, Oconee County has seen changes in the environment and its residents implementing sustainable practices into their everyday lives. KOCBC was awarded the Governor's Circle Award in 2021 for its efforts in getting residents to care for the environment while maintaining the highest standards. KOCBC helps in other ways as well. A current project in the works is the invasive removal at Heritage Park. This project aims to remove species that intrude on the environment. Osmarin, Grady News Source.
From all of us here at Grady News Source, thank you so much for watching us this semester. Next semester, new reporters will take over and keep you up to date on all things Northeast Georgia. Have a good night. Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of Georgia, which is solely responsible for its contents. Views expressed do not represent those of the administration nor the Board of Regents at the University System of Georgia. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have your seatbelt buckle tight. Both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. Well, not in your hand trying to text somebody back because